around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Some way to lay the dust along the plaza here. That old man Briscoe waters it down once a week, Chester. Sure, and they've mud up your knees for two days and dust all the rest of the time. Well, I guess that's the price of civilization. What is it? <laughs> dust. What civilization got to do with dust? Well, Dodge is growing, Chester. More people coming west all the time. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe we ought to move on west ourselves. Oh, where to? Oh, I don't know. Colorado Territory, maybe. Yeah, look at there. What? Well, that, that sign there on the next door there. Laughing gas show tonight. Phenomenon. Huh? <laughs> That's phenomenon, Chester. Oh, well. Stafford's laughing gas show. Amazing, hilarious admission. 25 cents. Yeah, it looks like Dodge is getting some entertainment. You see, I told you it was getting civilized. My. If I could get me the loan of 25 cents, I sure would be there tonight. Yeah, and you'd probably enjoy it, too. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with them shows. No. 25 cents, well... Ah, that ain't a whole lot of money. No, you're right. I didn't. And, and I could pay back whoever loaned it to come Saturday. Sure. Seems a pity to miss that show. Oh, all right, Chester. Here, what? here, here's your money. Oh, Twenty-five no, no, cents no, no, a no. quarter. I wasn't hinting or nothing like that. Well, thank you, Mr. Dillon. Thank you. Well, hello, Matt, Chester. Kitty and I began to think you weren't coming. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. Sam, bring up another pitcher of beer, will you? Right away, Miss Kitty. It's nice to know the laws on its appointed rounds, even if it means friends are kept waiting. Oh, is Doc mad because he had to buy the first pitcher of beer? <laughs> He's told Sam to put it on your bill. <laughs> you know, I believe it. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Kitty. Thanks, Sam. Uh, say, Doc, you know what we just seen down the street? Yeah. A circus? No. A sign saying there's going to be a laughing gas show here tonight. It's the same thing. Now, oh, Doc, there's nothing wrong with a laughing gas show. A bunch of darn fools getting up and showing off in front of a bunch of darn fools. I ain't never been to one. I met Mr. and Mrs. Stafford earlier today. They're the people that put the show on. Yeah. Yeah, they seem real nice. There's no reason why they shouldn't be. Mrs. Stafford's a pretty little thing. Hey, you see, Doc? Oh, pretty enough. I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> what is it that bothers you, Doc? Have you ever been to a laughing gas show? No. Did you ever take gas yourself? Why, did you? Yes, in medical school. It's nitrous oxide, an anesthetic, and it's also an intoxicant. Well, Miss Kitty, are you going to be at the show? I, I don't think so, Chester. Uh, how, how about you, Mr. Jones? I guess I might as well, Chester. You'll make life miserable for me if I don't. Good. I just can't hardly wait. <laughs> Trapped with all them bottles and burners and things. 
<laughs> he got drunk as the Lord. Warren Peters? Yeah, yeah. He sang and he danced and he laughed and cried all at one time. He's kind of old to be carrying on like that, isn't he? <laughs> Well, I'm just as glad he ain't going to be shaving me tomorrow. And now, the next volunteer is Mr. Cloud Mark. Go on, man. Don't be scared. Here, sir, is your dollar for volunteering. Now, sit down right there. Good. Now, just put this nozzle in your mouth and breathe deep. That's it. Keep breathing. In. Out. In. Out. That's right. It's all right, folks. It won't hurt him. Cloud Marsh ain't so bad when he's asleep. <laughs> He'll come to in a minute. <laughs> See, Mr. Jones, when they come out of that gas, there's just no telling what they'll do. <laughs> yeah, but if Cloud Marsh comes out his real self, it might be quite a ruckus. Do us a favor, mister. Keep that bully under forever. <laughs> Where is it? I'm gonna smash you for this. Uh, take it easy, mister. It's all in fun. Who wants a fight? I'll, I'll fight anybody in the place. Oh, poor clown. Poor <laughs> clown. I know you don't like me. You don't like any of us. But me and my brothers will fight you any time. And we'll get you. We'll get you good. Uh, maybe, maybe, but, uh, maybe you better go. I ain't going to do it. I'll show you. Here, He busted all the laughing gas equipment. A couple of you men better help me here. The, the gas has made them a little hard to manage. Come on, Tessa, let's get out of here. What a thing to do. I've got some more apparatus in the back room. The show will continue in just a moment. That doggone cloud marsh starting to rucus like that. Well, Stafford said you become your natural self. And he sure did. Them marsh boys just wants to fight all the time, don't they? Yeah, there could be trouble from this, Chester. Well, why? My gracious, he's the one that started everything. Yeah, but a man like Cloud Marsh can't take being laughed at. Yeah, he'll make trouble, sure. After one, uh, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Hi, um, you know what it says? Uh, this is old Fulpert, and uh, I got a simple exercise for them what uh, simply cannot keep in shape. You know, it is called uh, the toe toucher. Here's what you do: uh, you stand with your feet at shoulder width. I mean, don't put your feet on your shoulders because. Uh, it's impossible. It's not worth the time you're going to waste, you know. Uh, just stand with your feet at shoulder width and your hands over your head, see? Uh, like it was a stick-up. Now, uh, keep your knees straight and bend down and touch your left toe with your right hand. Now, your right toe with your left hand. And now, back to hands over your head. This is a stick-up, remember? Well, that's all there is to it. Uh, of course, I don't care if I never do it again. Some of you guys uh, may have a little trouble with this exercise, uh, especially you individuals who uh, cannot see your toes when you look down. But uh, a few weeks of exercises uh, like this, and one called uh, pushing yourself away from the groaning board or the table, as uh, the plebeian folks say, and uh, you'll not only see your toes, you may even see your knees. And they're kind of pretty, ain't they? <laughs> All it takes is, uh, like, you know, 15 minutes a day. So uh, don't wait. Unwait. <laughs> Get the slogan? I want to tell you something, boy. Madison Avenue uh, lost a great uh, mind when I went in the Army. So uh, get your service pamphlet on physical fitness today. Move it. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, 
Hello, Matt. No. Oh, morning, Doc. There's some coffee on the stove. Help yourself. Yeah, thank you. And uh, how was the show last night? Well, I got there late, so I didn't see it all, but Chester said I was fine. I suppose Chester got up on the stage and made a fool of himself. <laughs> well, he probably would have, but he didn't get the chance. Claude Marsh took some of the gas and wanted to fight everybody in the place. Then he started crying and busted up all the equipment. It's a good thing those ornery brothers of his were down at the Long Branch instead of at the show. They'd have busted up the whole store. Yeah. You know, Matt, nitrous oxide's a dangerous thing to mess with. Too much can be fatal. I remember this boy at medical school who took this... Hey, Doc. Doc, I've been looking all over for you. Yeah? What's the matter, Chester? It's Mr. Stafford. He's been hurt bad. What? Oh. Well, Miss Stafford didn't say. Just that he got beat up and she needed Doc down at the store right quick. Take me a minute to run up and get my bag and I'll meet you out in front. All right, Doc. Where'd it happen, Chester? When? Oh, I don't know, but it couldn't have been too long ago. Miss Stafford said her husband was out back of the store with a wagon, and she heard a ruckus and run out, and she seen all three of them running off. All three who? Yeah, Claude Marsh and them two brothers of his. He just ought to be tarred and feathered, Mr. Dillon, all of them should. Yeah. What in the world was they after beating Mr. Stafford near to death? Well, I told you last night that some men can't stand being laughed at. Come on, Matt. Let's go. Uh, Chester, you better come along, too. Nothing to do now but let him rest, Mrs. Stafford. How long is he going to be like that, Doc? Unconscious, I mean. He's had a bad concussion. Sometimes it takes only an hour or so. And sometimes days. Just have to wait and see. But isn't there something I can do for him? Just let him rest. Mrs. Stafford, are you ready to swear out a complaint against the Marsh brothers? Earl and me don't want no trouble, Marshal. Yeah, but they almost killed your husband. We sign a complaint now, and the marshes would really come after us. Earl wasn't always a man to run from trouble. What? I know who Earl really is, Miss Stafford. I've known ever since you first came to town. But how? He's Ernie Stubblefield, isn't he? That, that's all behind us, Marshal. He's forgot about being Ernie Stubblefield. Matt, what's this all about? Well, Earl Stafford's real name is Stubblefield, Doc. He had quite a reputation up on the Red River. Four killings. And he did some time for the last one. Marshal, after Earl got out of prison, he come to me in Missouri. He was sick with himself. Sick with all the fighting and killing. He pleaded with me to marry him so we could start over. And when I found out, he really meant it. And we got married. As Mr. and Mrs. Stafford, huh? As long as he was Ernie Stubblefield, there'd be no peace. Uh huh? Does he still have his gun? He keeps it in the trunk, but he's changed. He'd never use it. Not no more. I see. No, you don't. If he ever used that gun to kill another man, even in self-defense, the whole terrible business would start all over again. So he ain't going to use it. Never. Sure. Well, I uh, take it you're not going to sign a complaint then, huh? Marshal, I ain't going to sign nothing. All right, ma'am. But I'm still going to throw Claude Marsh in jail until you leave town. But I tell you, I was right there in Pottawatomie County, and I seen no, it. Andrew, them Marsh boys, they don't like that kind of talk. Well, John Brown come you. down the creek and murdered all five settlers. Now, you ask what over there? He ought to know. Andrew. That's what he was named for, Pottawatomie County. Hey, come to think of it, old man Marsh named the other two boys to the counties they was born in, too. You know, old Sage and Cloud. You, know you talk to for you're going to get in We've trouble, Andrew. We've been sitting listening to you, old man. You sure feel your liquor, don't you? Well, I, I didn't mean nothing against you and your brothers, Cloud. no. You didn't mean nothing, but you do like to drink, don't you? Well, just a one or two to get started in the morning. I don't figure one or two's enough for an old man. So I'll just give you this whole bottle. Hold him, Walter. Oh, no, 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 I'll pour enough Let liquor down his Let gullet that he'll... All right, right hold it. We ain't doing nothing, Marshal. Just giving old Andrew his morning bottle. Let go of him. Okay. <sighs> You're coming with me, Cloud. Where? Jail. Well, what for? Disturbing the peace, breaking up the show last night. 
Now, do you want to walk or you want to be carried? Okay, I'll go with you, Marshal, but I'll tell you something. You ain't going to keep me in jail long. Marion J. Bennett again was another little-known item of American military history. The general wished he had said it, and the reporters gave him credit in the headlines. But it was somebody else who made the greatest ad lib of the First World War. Lafayette, we are here. It happened when the first American expeditionary forces reached Paris, and the French asked General John J. Black Jack Pershing to deliver an address commemorating the event at the tomb of the military hero Lafayette. Pershing, however, designated Colonel Charles Stanton to handle the oratory, and the colonel duly delivered and concluded his speech. We pledge our hearts and our honor in carrying this war to successful issue. Then, remembering the Frenchman's great help and friendship for America in revolutionary days, he saluted the tomb and called out, Lafayette, we are here. General Pershing was persuaded to speak briefly after that, and somehow the newspaper men put the famous line into his remarks. But the general himself later wrote, I have often wished it could have been mine. But those words were spoken by Colonel Stanton, and to him must go the credit. Incidentally, Lafayette is buried in American soil that he brought back to France after the Revolutionary War. <laughs> Claude Marsh was right. He didn't stay in jail long. Within an hour, Watt and Osage walked into the office with a writ from Judge Bent. They paid his bail, and I had to turn him loose. There was nothing I could do. I had hoped to hold him in jail till the Staffords got out of town, but since I couldn't, I told Chester to keep an eye on him. Well, nothing happened all that day, and that evening I was sitting over coffee with Doc and Kitty at Delmonico. Well, nothing like a good dinner to cheer you up. Even if it is a little greasy. <laughs> you always see the bright side, don't you, Doc? <laughs> of course. How's Mr. Stafford tonight, Doc? Well, I guess he's coming along all right. He opened his eyes for a couple of minutes late this afternoon, and then he dropped off again. His wife hopes they can leave town tomorrow. Huh? Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? I've been looking all over for you. I thought maybe you'd be over at the Long Branch, but you wasn't. Well, you don't mind if Matt buys me a dinner now and then, do you? Oh, my goodness, no, but I sure did waste a lot of time trying to find him, and they already left the Texas Trail 10, 15 minutes ago. Who left? It's them Marsh boys, all three of them. Were they drunk? Oh, my, yes, and they was talking about giving somebody some of that gas a dose of his own medicine, they said. Stafford. Matt, that could kill him in his condition. Oh, Matt. Yeah, come on, Doc. Chester, let's go. Yesterday, I put on a show for you. Now, you're going to put on a show for us, please, Mrs. Stafford. Oh, please. You may sing, you may dance, you may make a fool of yourself. Ain't no use calling him laying down conscious in the back room like he is. He ain't about to help you. Now. Don't do this, please. He was mighty thoughtful to leave all the equipment out here on the table, Mrs. Stafford. Now, sit down. Sit you take this mouth? No, no, please, Mary. No. That's it. Breathe in, breathe out. No. Oh, oh, now, no. now, don't act like that. You need a little more gas to put on a good show oh, for you. Let me go. Why, you just ain't nowhere near happy yet, Mrs. Stafford. Give me another word. No. All right. Turn right. around, Cloud. Oh. Well, looky there. Old man Stafford got up out of bed. You filthy pigs. Now, that ain't no way to talk. Can I go with my wife? Cloud, he's got a gun. Earl, don't shoot. Don't worry. He ain't going to. Don't shoot. He ain't got the strength. Stand away from her. Not likely. Don't you forget, I got a gun in her back. All right, hold it, all of you. I'll handle this, Stafford. 
You stay out of it, Marshal. Put up your guns, both of you. There's three of us, Marshal. There'll be a full cloud. Now turn her loose. All right. I'll turn her loose. <laughs> Stafford. It was my bullet that got him. Is that true? You shot him? Yeah, that's true. Your aim was off, Stafford. Afraid of hitting your wife, I guess. <laughs> All right, you two. What, old sage? You find your horses and you get out of town. Now you keep on riding. Stafford, you'd better get Earl back to bed. Yes. My, Mr. Dillon, did you see the look on Miss Stafford's face when she found out Earl missed Cloud that he didn't kill him? I'd admire to have a picture of that. Yeah. That was a nice thing you did, Matt. What thing? What do you mean, Doc? Chester... Matt's bullet hit Cloud Marsh in the hand. The shot that killed him came from the other direction. You were aiming for his gun hand, Matt, and you know it. It was Earl Stafford that killed Cloud Marsh. Well, I'll be doggone. Yes, sir. It's a mighty nice thing you did. For both of them. and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.